G'day! In today's video, I'll be upgrading the NVMe SSD in this ASUS Vivo book. Its model number is TM420i. Well, its full model number, as I'll just show you here, is this one right here. TM420IA-DB71T. So just to make sure yours looks kind of similar, should look kind of like this. Anyway, to begin with, we'll be looking at the bottom of the machine. It should be relatively straightforward to get into. And while we're there, I will discuss a few other potential upgrades you could do to it. But at the minute, I'm just going to stick with this, I reckon. So you're going to need somewhere to put your screws and a small Phillips head screwdriver. Now I believe there's 10 screws. One, two, three, four, do note that one is longer, five, another long one, both at the front. Six, and I've just spilt them everywhere. Seven, another long one. Eight, another long one. Nine, another short one. And lastly, ten. So we have long ones going down here. Now, yeah, how am I going to get in there? I reckon I'm going to see if I can uh, just pry this section here. Or at the back corner here. As you can see, that is lifting. So I have a start. So I'll go back down. I'll lift that with my nail. Put in a thin plastic pry tool. You'd be able to use an old bank card or something to that effect. And we're coming apart quite easily from there. So this whole section here just came off as I lifted this up. I just keep pulling and we're in. So for me, there's really not too much internally, as you can see. I'll start down low. We have Two, rear, uh, two downwards facing speakers, one, two, which are connected up to over here. We have the 42 watt hour battery here, which should last us pretty darn well, I believe up to about around eight hours on this machine. We have, I believe it's an Intel Wi-Fi 6 card over here, this one here. Can't quite zoom in anymore, so I'll hold it up. Model number 8265NGW. So that one there is our wireless card. And from there we can see our various ports along the side here. So we have micro SD, dual headphone microphone jack, Type C, USB, HDMI, and our power jack here. So if you do damage your power jack, you will require to replace the whole port itself. So that would require removing the board or potentially a hot air station blowing on here. But you remove the board and go from there. As we can see, we've got three small screws holding in the hinges, which I am curious in the length of those screws. I would classify that as fairly small. Let's put the back down. Going over this way, we have the connection for the battery, which in this instance I will attempt to disconnect. Here's a rather odd looking connection. Hmm. 
Hmm. Ah, that's a little lock. So this bit pushes out. And we should be able to lift up from there. That lifted up nice and easy once that lock was removed. We have a replaceable fan if need be. The bearings on this start to fail over time. Pretty straightforward to look, it looks like. One, two, three screws that could come out from there. We have a daughter board with a single USB 3 port on there. I say USB 3, it's potential, has the potential to be USB 2. We have the hinges, four screws holding into position. This cable going down here is for the display. And lastly, let's get into it. After my brief discussion, copper cooler, I'd say under one of these two, not sure which one yet. Let's see if we can open it up. I'll rotate this 90 degrees. There we go. Now it's semi stuck under the battery there, which is quite annoying. Also under here looks to be, I'd say, another four gig stick of RAM. Especially being this is a single sided DIM. If we were to replace the RAM in here, which I'll just rotate this back around. We push out the two tabs here and here. And slide out. There we go. So looking at this, we have a single stick of 3200 megahertz, four gig RAM by Samsung, which if we were to change that, 3200 megahertz is pretty darn decent. So you could replace it with something like that at a slight performance decrease. But then you'd be going 16 and four and losing your dual channel speed so at the moment i'm just going to stick with the eight gig for now or the two fours so that slides in at 45 degrees and then pushes down and this goes back over the top of it and lastly the mbma under here so one screw here and then we should be able to lift that up and pull back. There we go, and we've removed one NVMe SSD. Which, as you can see, there's our 512 gig of storage right there. Otherwise, it's an extremely blank M.2. Zoom in here. So, model number is MZ VLQ1521. 5120 and I'm taking that particular one out and I will be replacing it with this which is a Kingston A2000 one terabyte NVMe so these ones had good experience with them they're reasonably good value and then I'll be doing a fresh install of Windows directly under it so it's always best to upgrade prior to using the machine otherwise you do have to clone it so with this up, slide it into here, into this slot at a 45 degree angle. Push it into those pins disappear down here. And then you should be able to drop it down from there. And it should line up over here. From there, we put that single screw back in. Do it up. I'm gonna fold down this metal and push it back into its small little metal grooves that you may be able to see if I angle it up along here. Same on the other side. Click, 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 click. There we go. A little bit of thermal tape here. And now all we should have to do is reconnect the battery. It should be slotting this into here pushing it down, that's nice and flush, and then sliding this bit of metal back, like so. 
that should do it on the insides of this machine. So let's seal it up. So we put the bottom cover back on. Light, lightly just push around it. And that should click into position around the laptop. And then we proceed to put in our screws once more. Uh, I'll do the long ones first, just so we don't forget them. One in the center, one in the middle, and two up the front. That's all the major ones put in. Now let's put in the smaller ones. So once you've finished putting in these screws, more than likely what you're gonna have to do from there is go to the Windows website, or potentially before, if you have enough, you can do this after if you have another machine. It would be to go to the Windows 10 website, download the Windows 10 Media Creator tool, then create a install USB using the latest version of Windows from there. And there you should be able to reinstall Windows back onto your machine and get it up and going once more. Hope this video helps you and I'll catch you guys in another one. Bye.